Okay, councillors, the time being 6.30pm, I declare the council meeting open. Uh, Persons in the gallery are advised that under the Local Government Act 1993, a person may not take before the proceeding of a meeting of a council or committee without the authority of the council or committee. <coughs> Tape recording includes a video camera and an electronic device capable of recording speech. Mobile phones must be turned off so as to not disrupt the meeting. Anyone including councillors found using a mobile phone will be told to leave the meeting immediately and for the duration of the said meeting. An audio recording of this meeting will be taken for military purposes as authorised by the local government act. This meeting is live streamed on council's website to allow the community to follow council debates and discussions without the need to attend meetings in person. Members of the public attending or speaking at a meeting agree to have their image, voice and personal information, including name and address, recorded and publicly broadcast. Strathfield Council does not accept liability for any defamatory remarks or inappropriate comments that are made during the course of the meeting. Any part of the, the meeting that is held in closed session will not be streamed. So please be upstanding for the press. <coughs> we hope that our deliberations today will be objective and decisions are impartial, made for the benefit of the whole community. And the recognition of traditional custodians. Let us begin by acknowledging the Wongal people, the traditional custodians of the land on which this meeting is being held. We pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Um, we don't have any speakers for open forum, but I do have a speaker for an item which I'll get on to in a bit. Uh, declarations of pecuniary interest, councillors? Um, and uh, I've received an apology, sorry councillors, from uh, Acting General Manager Brian Barrett and um, we have uh, Mary Rowland sitting uh, beside me uh, today who is the Director of <laughs> Office of General Manager and other people. You're an acting this and an acting that. Yes, I'm acting. Yes. Um, confirmation of minutes of the meeting, 7th June. Moved by Councillor Pennsylvania. Second by Councillor Hall. Any uh, debate, councillors? No debate. I'll put the uh, motion. <coughs> Councillor ready? Yep, unanimous. Okay. And before we go into acknowledgement, um, I'll just like to. I've got a, we've got a speaker on an item, um, so I'll just spend, move to suspend the standing orders mm -hmm. to bring that item forward. <coughs> Where's my council pension? Second by Hall. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to bring forward uh, DEU2. <coughs> which is a uh, planning proposal at uh, 11 off to square and two subway lanes. Page 409. 9 to 11 9th Street and 88 to 92A Parramatta Road, Hungary. So um, I have uh, Mr. Matthew Daniel of uh, Pacific Community Housing and Pacific Planning. Uh, if you can just make your way to the, the end of the table, table Mr. Daniel. And uh, we've got uh, there's five minutes uh, to speak. Certainly. Um, <coughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Deputy Mayor and Councillors. I really appreciate uh, your time this evening um, and uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to attend. Um, I won't have much to say, I definitely won't use the five minutes then just to, just to, uh, we've been working with council for an extended period of time while the state government's been dealing with matters that I'm sure council are aware in relation to traffic and those sort of things uh, in this precinct uh, in relation to the Parramatta Road Corridor strategy and uh, we're pleased that um, the outcome today for the recommendation that it moved to, toward to to a gateway consideration by the uh, by the minister, and uh, we support the the recommendations before you from uh, the local planning panel. I'm also here in my capacity as a registered community housing provider, and just to say that um, there is a um, it's part of the public benefits in this that we've negotiated with council and staff that will continue as we progress and do the additional studies and uh, and items that is part of the report and the recommendation that we're quite encouraged that council takes a deliberate approach to providing additional social housing in the community and as a community housing provider that's a, that's a great thing to see. So if um, I'm not sure if protocols allowed me to answer questions but if there are any I'm, I'm happy to do so 
But other than that, I just thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to continuing um, working positively with Council as we progress this project to uh, to to, um, to its, um, its plan making proposal, its exhibition with the community, and obviously the next steps of delivering the application. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Y
The theme for 2022 is Get Up, Stand Up and Show Up, which encourages everyone to champion institutional, structural, collaborative and cooperative change while celebrating those who have already driven and led change in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities over the generations. Stratfield Council is celebrating NADOC 2022 by partnering with one of the state's most recognised and respected Aboriginal art organisations, Gumari. Gumari Aboriginal Art Cooperative. This exhibition includes work from founding Gumari members, established and emerging Aboriginal artists, celebrating the rich culture and artistic diversity of some of this state's leading artists. Jeffrey Samuel, the founding member of the Mali Aboriginal Artists and Cooperative, will be our guest speaker following a smoking ceremony at Strathfield Town Hall this Wednesday at 4 o'clock. And I am suggesting you all attend, and it will be a lovely evening, and the exhibition is going to be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Committee. And uh, any other advice, Councillor Hall? Uh, my acknowledgement is a little bit of a sad one. Um, I'd like to discuss regarding Boris Gawant. Boris Gawant was the husband of Elizabeth Gawant. Um, the funeral was held today, and Boris yeah, is the beloved husband of Elizabeth Gawant. Elizabeth Gawant is over right there, and she was mayor from 1998 to 1999, deputy mayor from 97 to 98, 1990 to 2000, and 2004-2006. And she was alderman and councillor from 1991 to 2008. So 17 years as a councillor. Wow. Um, so Boris was born in um, in Germany, um, and he was in his late 90s. Um, Boris and Elizabeth had one daughter, Rebecca. Boris was very well known in the Stratford community and had been here for a very, very, very long time. Um, and he was an absolute amazing cabinet maker that was very popular in the Stratford LDA. He will be sadly missed by his <coughs> children, grandchildren and his wife Elizabeth and the Stratford community. Um, if we could send flowers to Elizabeth for once. Um, so that's a quarry knowledge for husband. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rockwell. And uh, Councillor Dutton, you have a chance. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll just for one acknowledgement to say that yoga was a, a practice that was uh, uh, invented in India thousands of years ago and for well-being of community members and it is good to see that uh, yoga practice is being promoted in uh, Australia as well and has taken some momentum. I was uh, proud to acknowledge that the Council General of India organized a uh, very high profile yoga session in the town a uh, week before last week and also following the suit our uh, local community also has started yoga session in the Strasbourg, free yoga session. So I think uh, uh, we ought to acknowledge and, and encourage those uh, community members who are participating in the yoga for general health and well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, any further acknowledgements, Councillor? Yeah. Uh, deferred outstanding matters by Court Nil, uh, Mayoral Minutes Nil, Councillor's question to the Mayor Nil, uh, questions without, uh, with notice, Neil. We move on to 12.1, report from Audit and Risk Committee, page 36. Do I have a letter for this, Councillor? Councillor uh, Barker? Yeah, seconder? Councillor Hall? Um, Any discussion, Councillor? I just have a bit of a question. Yeah. I don't know if I'm reading this wrong, but uh, page 40, page 20. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Sorry, I'm yes. um, 4.2. It's got recommendation, motion, recommendation, and they look all exactly the same. Or am I not reading it right? I'm just don't, I just don't get it. Is that a double up on that? No, they've added the. 
and uh, then the letter will be shown to councillors that it's been sent. Shopping, they're not trying to follow us. No, 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 they're not. It's just a letter. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll personally write the letter if you like, councillor Zappa. I'm, ha I'm happy to. Thank you. Right. Anything else, councillors? No. no? I'll put good. the motion. All in favour? Unanimous. Okay, 13.2, um, the Melbourne Reserve Lighting, uh, page 85, uh, Councillor Zarka, you have the floor, do I have a second for this motion? Councillor Hall, second. You don't need to put it on the floor. Councillor Zarka, you have to Councillor Zarka, you have to I'm going to change. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it was a very kind of the last council that they built a pedestrian crossing across the middle reserve for, uh, because they, I mean, I've been living in the area for about 35 years and, and that used to, the park used to be a very sleepy uh, uh, reserve or park, if you like, but it is very uh, highly used now. There are hundreds of feet uh, on the, in the afternoon uh, uh, playing there. And the pedestrian crossing that has been built, and there is no um, street lighting around the area. It is totally dark. And uh, and, the, and in the winter, the sun sets very quickly. So, some, so suddenly, it is dark. So the request from the people living or using the particular facility is to uh, put some lighting arrangements in the area. And but I must uh, mention that I. I'm not expecting uh, a light like uh, uh, standard light fitting that you might put in a playground, like in a cricket uh, club or, or anywhere, so that it's fully illuminated. We are talking about increasing the visibility so that the people can walk across the road or, 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 or play when the light is very low in the playground. And it came about because one day as I was walking, I got a call on the phone and I said there was an, uh, near, almost near me. Both the driver and the kids, they are there. And they requested me that to see the situation there, that there is no light and the person who could not see the uh, uh, person walking across. And it is totally dark and I took a picture uh, a couple of days ago mm. and sent it to some people. It is peace uh, dark. It is peace dark. So, uh, while uh, we are uh, uh, asking for support, is some basic lighting around the uh, street on either side of, on both sides of the road, so that people can safely cross, and the traffic can see the uh, person crossing the street, the drivers, and also some light illumination in the parking area, so that people can at least safely walk across and use the park when the light is no, no. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Any debate, Councillor? Um, Councillor Pennsylvania. Yeah, through the chair to Councillor Yana, what street are you talking about with the crossing? Uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it's a Hampstead Road. There is a pedestrian crossing that That's was That's a new pedestrian crossing. That's right. That's right. a new pedestrian crossing that was And there's no lighting over that pedestrian crossing? There is nothing. And there are big trees, and the, there is a lighting in between the park, and it's just totally dark. The, we are upgrading uh, the crossing area. Uh, the traffic committee, I believe. Didn't we do there, There's an audit. But, yeah. yeah. Sorry. And I will actually, if we can get some advice, I believe Councillor Hall put up a motion about an audit for our pedestrian crossing. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know. No, take it on notice. I'll take it on notice, yes, because mm. uh, yeah. I don't mind the, if the pedestrian crossing is lit up, I think that's a very but um, I don't know about you. We have, I, I, we I have a light meter. Event. We have light meters. We can we can have the, the urban services department. We mm -hmm. can send someone to measure the light at the pedestrian crossing, and that will determine the what will go on. So um, yes, that can be done. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if I didn't uh, no, I was just showing some pictures. And they're not using it to communicate. So, right, you don't you don't need to show oh, them because we can sure. we can we can investigate that crossing and any others if it, if this has already been moved through the traffic committee. Sorry, Council Hall. Council Hall. Sorry, Council Hall has the floor. Okay, so I'd like to make an amendment, and um, one of the amendments I want to make is one to do with the lighting. Um, 
through the chair and lick the potato. Bone, bone <laughs> I always call it Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, just you know those lights that are like this high, yes. that are solar, that you know just do a bit, and, and, and basically for the walkway. What are they called? Solar lights. Low level solar lights. Low level solar. Solar. Right. It's called Australian Made in Queensland. There you go. Okay. Beautiful. Yes, so, so, but I needed to know what they were called. So my amendment would be um, that because we asked ask them for a report, that the report be provided to the September Council uh, workshop on the feasibility of providing low level solar solar near the play equipment um, in Melville uh, Reserve. And and the council um, review the pedestrian crossing from lighting as per motion number and then and sorry as per the previous previous order motion. That's my that's my amendment. I accept the first one, but the, because it's a safety issue. I would prefer that it is done. Uh, the first one, like you say, but. Which one? Yeah. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the playground or are you talking about the pedestrian? Pedestrian. Yeah, that's important. So I'm just putting it like this. We already have um, a motion for all the pedestrian crossings across the LGA to be audited for sufficient lighting. So it's already been done. So this motion becomes part of that motion. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that it is a safety issue. Like I said, we are, I remember that notion that we put to, and I am happy with that. But this is a safety issue. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say, uh, I was here when Councillor Hall put the motion up. The motion was about auditing all of our uh, the uh, safety for the lighting and etc. about all of our pedestrian yeah. crossings across the whole LGA. Yeah. And it came back with some recommendations and some planned schedule work um, for the future. But this one was missed. If, if that's right. So it needs to be done. It may not have been done. Oh, yeah, it may not have been done. It might be next financial year budget. Mm. Okay, we haven't got oh, we're already in the next financial year. Well, it was four days. That's four days. Why aren't they being done? <laughs> <laughs> a bit like federal. Mr. Albanese hasn't picked up the budget. Council, please, please. Um, the question for the chair. So, my, it, it doesn't really change the, the, your motion. All it does is basically say that there was a previous or that there was a previous motion for auditing of all of the um, pedestrian crossings, and this pedestrian crossing needs to be part of that audit. That's it. That's all it does. It doesn't really change it. it doesn't change your motion. It's still got your name on it. This is the sort of thing I send an email to the staff to just check if the if the result is mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Anyway, Council, look, it has play equipment in there. I can't uh, support it. Um, you know, I have a family member, and uh, there's no conflict there, but they are in that uh, in that industry, and it's uh, uh, quite unsafe to be lighting up play equipment for children to use at night time unless it's uh, uh, quite illuminated. And we don't want that sort of uh, illumination in our uh, local residential streets. So I won't be supporting uh, your motion, unfortunately, Councillor Brasser. Any further debate, Councillor? Um, I have to say that the pedestrian crossing is okay, but the, the play equipment is not a lot of it. Because they the pedestrian is going to be done. Mother, mother too, I would never allow my kids to go and hang around in the dark. And they don't need that, they don't need to be there. Any further debate, Councillors? No? I'll put the motion. All those in favour of the. No, I haven't closed your question. Oh, yes. Sorry, Councillor, please. I'll allow you to close. Please, uh, five minutes on the time. When that be Sure. Well, well, just uh, uh, through, uh, through, the, through the chair, I'm just uh, before I close it, I'm just saying that if, we, uh, uh, if I use, uh, deleted the word play to me, and we are talking about the lighting of the general area, would that be acceptable to us? Look, Councillor, I, I, you know, I really think uh, you can't, it doesn't work like that. You need to make the amendment and the people vote for their vote for it. But uh, I really think, um, I think some councillors expressed their view about the play equipment. 
and the lighting is already being done. Um, so it's kind of doubling up on something that's already happening. It's creating more work for our staff. Um, that's my idea. Okay, just uh, yeah. Let, let me propose the you you're, cl you're closing, Casper. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can. Uh, you can't amend when you're closing. Uh, no. Can't talk now, please. Yeah, sorry. But he's closing the debate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great yeah. yeah. So okay. No, if he, if, he, if he wants to say, I can sit down. Take my email. No, we will. Right, Casper. So the debate. No, you have to close. You're closing, and the time is already. Uh, uh, clicking away. Yeah, something to say. Yeah, he's closing a bit. He's closing. Oh. You're not going to stop me, right? <laughs> 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 okay. You can ask a question. Still with it. Turn it into a question. You can ask a question. What's he going to do? Just raise his voice at the end. Yeah, uh, chair. I think you know what, you're just asking for a report. What's wrong with that? I think that we can have a look at that. Are you asking? Through, through the chair. Mm -hmm. Dad, are you asking? Through the chair. Can I just ask, because this is the sort of thing that just because something's a report that we should support it. Um, what sort of you know time would be involved, staff time, even if it is a simple basic report like that? Like there is staff work involved, they may have to go inside. Like, you know, what sort of... Uh, just a, just a rough idea, uh, Mr. Bowden. Yes, me through you. It would probably take two to three hours to prepare the report and a couple of hours of survey work on site to check the after hours, check the libraries and stuff on the pedestrian crossing. But that's going to happen anyway. It's happening anyway because of the previous motion. No, that's right. We're and separately. Yeah. And also through the check, in regards to the lights in the hall, there is also from the pathway in Melbourne Hall along to the area park. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That was the whole thing. That's an issue in place. Yes. Question. Has it been completed yet? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Bowman, has, has it been completed no, yet? It's the 5th of July. Yes, I'll try and get done on the 7th. My question to the Chair is to Mr. Bowman. Bowman. Do you need Bowman? Is it A-M or A-N? No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Council, Council, oh, Council, 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 Well, you're the I remember not. <laughs> um, no, seriously, my question is: you know the, the pathway guys, are they um, are they low level? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Which motion are we doing? <laughs> the uh, accepted amendment. Oh, it is and, the amendment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favour, councillors? Councillor Darker, Councillor Kai, Councillor Hall, against? Councillor Reedy, Councillor Mahaswara, Councillor Pensabini, and uh, the Mayor. And I declare the motion lost. Uh, 13.3, so the motion uh, tie upon will have a first with 13.3. Uh, uh, moved by Councillor Mahaswara, second by Councillor Hall. You have the floor, Councillor Mahaswara. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I take what's I take it as read what's concluded as the rationale behind this celebration, uh, in essence, to strap the council areas home to a large population of people from Sri Lanka and from southern India. Um, those people do celebrate uh, uniquely this holiday, which is distinct to other Indian subcontinental or Hindu holidays that are more broadly celebrated. It strikes me that for the reason Stratford Council is in an ideal position to host some sort of event. Uh, that will attract um, many people from around the city and uh, perhaps even the state uh, to celebrate this occasion. The proposed date is on the 15th of January 2023. This is only to get a feasibility report from Council uh, and to understand if it is something that would be cost effective uh, use of Council resources. I would also find that the reason for uh, expressly including the active engagement of community groups is for the purpose of ensuring that there's some level of cost recovery or support from that community uh, to put this event together and therefore the cost to the community would be borne by those that largely celebrate it and council would be in a facilitated role. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, any debate councillors? Councillor Kai, Councillor Hall, Councillor Reedy, Councillor Pensabini. Um, so, one of the reasons um, uh, I totally and completely appreciate is that, uh, that there are a lots of festivals for different co uh, communities. It's why we have a multicultural committee, um, but it's also why we have um, why we have grants. Now, has anybody read the, the grant guideline online? We read it through today. Council, you read through with me. Yes, so we read it, I've read it through today. And so one of the things about grants is it, 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 one of the priorities is multicultural activities. And it's a, a, a priority in our grants. So what I'm suggesting, so that we don't, um, so that we don't um, uh, appear to be biased or discriminatory or racist or anything like that, um, my suggestion is that we change the motion to read uh, that Strathfield Council supports the Thai Pongal celebration and encourages community groups to apply for a cultural grant from the Strathfield Council for the celebration. Number two, grant applications are now open and closed. Uh, the grant applications are now open and closed on 31 July. If Mr. Sharangan, or Councillor, Councillor, sorry, I'm talking during the day or something, um, would uh, uh, accept that um, that uh, amendment, I'd be grateful, otherwise, I shall put it up as a shadow. No, it's not accepted. Is that accepted? Then I shall put it up as a shadow.
So are you with um, council, the Council of the Amendment? Foreshadow. Yeah. So we have to vote on. <coughs> well, you vote on the second designation. For the foreshadow. Motion. Foreshadow. Yeah. So no, we haven't got. Got vote on this before we get. Yeah, that's right. No, no. Well, no. She she's indicated a foreshadow, right. which means that she needs to vote. Okay. So your foreshadow is that. That's and, and is there a second? Uh, I second. All right. Okay. So the foreshadow has been seconded. Moved by Councillor Hall. Second by Councillor Data. So now you put the any. Uh, now you put the motion. Now you put this motion. Yeah, the, the, motion. Motion. the first motion. The first motion. Yeah, the motion is debate second. about the first motion. Doesn't matter. She's voted for it. Doesn't mean she has to vote for it. No, the motion is debate. Oh, yeah, the first motion has not been completed. Debate the first motion. Okay, so we call for debate on the first motion. Then you're still happy to second that motion, Councillor Hall? Or? I don't have any. I, 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 I can. Not just because of course you want to be. Any any debate? Yes, I, 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 I want to say yes, that. Yes, yes, that. Yes. That last year, I know that a number of community uh, members <coughs> who wanted to celebrate Pongal, and it didn't happen last year. Uh, there are active interest by community groups. It didn't happen because they do not find some financial support. So, what uh, uh, Councillor Hall said that would be that. There would be various community groups who are interested, mm -hmm. and 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 because they are celebrating a number of things, could not afford. But they were really, without knowing this about this motion, there is a movement in the community for people to celebrate Sai Pongal. It is already there. I know that the paint of interest and Stratford Council support in this area. And the, if they, there is a funding available, I am pretty sure there will be a big community uh, member who will be taking it. So that's the reason I am supporting it because I have great knowledge that. The large number of community members who wanted to support it last time could not make it happen, but I know that there is a preparation going on for this. So, thank you. Uh, can yes, I have a question? Um, I can see through the Thai Hongo. Is this the Thai country's festival or Indian or Indian? <laughs> I'll, I'll address it in closing because it's an interesting thing. Huh? <laughs> because it's the Thai. At the beginning, I thought it was no. the Thai. No. No. Australian oh, okay. oh, yeah. 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 Because you know, and, and there should be a rational reason for everything we do as council. So I'll explain mine behind why I've identified these two. Um, effectively, our three largest uh, groups from outside of Australia, inside this LGA, are the Chinese population, followed by um, the Sri Lankan or Tamil population, followed by the um, I believe it's the Korean population, right? By language spoken at home. Uh, council supports a Chinese New Year celebration, and I think that's entirely. Point. Sorry. Point of order. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, though council does support um, the Chinese New Year, it's not. It's actually put on by the Homeless West Chamber of Commerce. And council does not um, only fund it through a grant if they apply for a grant. Okay. That makes good That's what I'm saying. If council would only support it through a grant, they don't get any money. The Chinese community don't get any money, and it's, but they still support it. And that's what I'm saying here. That council definitely support the. Um, that's what the amendment is about. Sorry. Yep. So look, the the purpose is essentially that. <laughs> the purpose. Yeah, is can I just can I just make a point as well? Uh, it is actually called Lunar New Year. It isn't specifically the Chinese New Year celebration. Okay. As it is, the council has a facilitated role uh, for these sort of activities because it has access to its public land, as well as the ability to license markets off and things of that nature. And when we look at the three largest communities, we look at, uh, I think it's great that uh, Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year is extensively celebrated. And when I go to Singapore, I think it's excellent that there's a number of holidays from a number of multicultural groups that are supported by the government there. And when you look at these particular communities, where this is sort of a heart of their communities that they've decided to make here, um, that these are the things, these are the groups I've identified. So it's not targeting any particular group, except for based on the ABS data. 
Um, now turning to a more interesting conversation, why is it dipongal and why does the word di come from? It's because there's actually quite a common relationship between the Tamil people in Sri Lanka and southern India and the people of Thailand. <laughs> right? <laughs> that goes back almost a thousand years. Oh, okay. And so this is actually something that is celebrated in Thailand, funnily enough, and other parts of Asia. Mm. But it's predominantly a southern Indian and northern Sri Lankan um, uh, sort of event. Well, you know, all parts of it. It's celebrated all over India, yeah. but with a different name. Yeah. Baisakhi is in Sindhara. Mm. There, there, yeah, there, there are many names, but. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrated yeah, celebrated. Yeah, celebrated. Absolutely celebrated. Not just all over India, but also in Nepal and places like this. Yeah, yeah it, but it, it's just a slightly different thing. And um, I just want to point out a particular irony, right? And this is where we kind of get a comedic effect in this council. Every single thing. I look at the last motion here, and it is Christmas party packages with street Christmas lights. Mm. As part of the Christmas party package, the council provide Christmas lights, which are returned to council. So essentially the council should go out of its way to store Christmas lights in the council chamber or building, somewhere like that, and loan it out to private individuals once a year and expect their return every single year, right? And that is for a holiday that is broadly celebrated across this entire city, right? It is something that's completely supported by government, there's extensive money that goes into it, but we can't have a facilitated role in respect of these two festivals because there's some sort of issue with it. I'm not exactly sure why, but we should make it supported, right? But in respect of the... Uh, in Okay, well, you'll explain later in your motion. Yeah. I didn't understand what you Yeah. <laughs> but, the Christ, but the Christmas holidays should have the council essentially stockpile Christmas decorations to deploy to private homes every single year. I mean, I think there's just something that underlies this amendment where you kind of say, look, I can't support council having facilitated role in respect to these celebrations, but I also want council to stop our Christmas supplies to deploy every year. Uh, it's subtle, but it's pervasive. Okay, you close. So we're putting the uh, first motion, <coughs> just so we're clear, councillors. Report. Okay. That is the motion. You can see it on the screen. That is what's being put. Then report be prepared on the feasibility of the Stratford Council to vote for and sponsor a public celebration. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for celebrating the what uh, yeah, yeah, for celebrating, celebrating Thai Pongal, this uh, uh, very popular yeah. Yeah. So we have it there. Uh, yeah. uh, do you have a question now for Tensor Bay? There are three chances to take that <coughs> ahead. Um, what's our total amount of grants that we uh, give out in Strathall Council? Is there a maximum of twenty thousand dollars on there? Through you, um, Mr. Chair, I'll have to take that on. Mm -hmm. And what's the maximum cultural grant that you can get? I have to take that. I can find here a quick So four committees put in, four committee, four groups put in. We still don't have enough money to um, offer that grant. We can, uh, so just to let you know, when the grants come in, we can review them. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 I, I can remember um, yeah. last, 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 last year the Chinese New Year celebration. Flemington Chamber of Commerce, they only get one thousand dollars. Uh, we're, we're tool. They might be like energy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how you change. Yeah, we can change. Yeah, we can change. So that, as you cancel the data, cancel all you have to do, cancel the data, sure. change your portfolio. Any uh, further debate, councillors at all? Yes, yeah. council ready. Hi, can I go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, look, I'll be uh, supporting this motion. Um, this isn't budgeted. It's uh, booked, it's scheduled for the 15th of January 2023. Um, we'll find out how much it's going to cost. Okay, put the motion. Anyway, any further debate councillors? Any further debate? Any further debate councillors? No, you mean the budget? No, you closed council halls? No, you're right. I'll put the uh, foreshadow motion as written. All those in favour? Uh, Councillor Data, Councillor Reddy, Councillor Chai, Councillor Hall, uh, and the Mayor. Uh, against, Councillor Mahaswan, Councillor Pensavini, I declare the foreshadow motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 13.4. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. <laughs> I'll say the same thing. Yeah, I'll say the same Councillor Mahaswan, you have the floor. Do I have a second to put a motion? Councillor Pensavini. Councillor. Well. Thank you. Oh, I should just say that in this particular instance, Stratford Council has a sister, sister relationship with Gapyong County in Korea, which is just outside of Seoul. And this would also serve to strengthen the relationship between this council and sister city. It shouldn't just be a platitude that we have these sort of relationships. Stratford is home to a historically uh, a historic Korean community, and that uh, historic community is very much evident uh, in the Stratford Town Centre. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a historic relationship in that it is current and historic. Um, the festival is part of the Lunar uh, Festival for Korean people. It's extreme, extremely significant uh, to the Korean community. Uh, it is also, from my personal experience, an extremely fun set of activities that occur. Again, these type of activities not just require money from council, in fact it probably doesn't require money from council. It requires council to take a facilitative role in terms of things like finding space, in terms of uh, licensing and in terms of coordinating various community groups and organisations that, that are at, in the community. Uh, I do not believe that it would be an expensive exercise to play this important function which is core to what council's functions are in this uh, in, in this part of its uh, part of local government. It is scheduled for the 22nd of January in 2023. I believe that grants are completely insufficient uh, to... We can change them, Councillor. We can change them. We can change them. No, I, I believe that grants are insufficient support because Council must have a facilitative and coordinating role in these kind of events. Uh, so the simple adding of money to the equation is not what's necessary, it's for Council to take a leading role. I would also say that Stratfield is home to a significant Korean and Tamil and Chinese community and none of them will thank and you for opposing and Indian community and none of them will thank you uh, for the supporting biggest, the or, yep, none of them will thank you 
for yeah. none of them will thank you for opposing these motions. None of them will thank you for amending these motions. Don't worry, there'll be a letter out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> and, I'll be letting off and, tomorrow. And, and and none of them will ever ever thank you for passing a motion calling for greater diversity on television as a matter of improving multicultural relationships in this country but then opposing having council have a facilitative role in organising okay. and have been significant to that community. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Good Good Mike, uh, I think, you know, uh, here what, what uh, Councillor uh, has what, what, uh, Warren uh, talk about the Korean, uh, Korean New Year. Actually, Korean New Year is everything same as like Chinese New Year. At the moment, it's just council. We call it Lunar New Year. Yes, yeah, yes. So I'm, I'm supporting, you know, the councillors, uh, the the motion, you know, to have this one. Make it together. <coughs> Thank you. Just uh, can I ask the council? Uh, you have personally been involved in the Lunar New Year. Yes. And uh, I believe Dr. Tang and yourself uh, actually invited the community uh, leaders yes. from all communities to the uh, Lunar New Year. Um, the Premier Chamber of Commerce. Yes. 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 Um, I think you know uh, actually the the, the chair the chair of the Premier Chamber of Commerce is Vietnamese. They celebrate the same day. Mm. I think this one is a big community. Uh, hopefully you know Council can support this one for the you know Lunar New Year. So, so many community was involved. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, so I would like to uh, move into the amendment. You want to accept the amendment? So, yeah, I, so we can't predict that. So <laughs> What's the amendment? Say the Trassel Council support um, the um, Korean New Year um, and celebrations and encourages uh, the community groups to um, apply for cultural grants from Strathfield Council for the celebrations. Number two, grant applications are now open and closed on 31 July. Would you uh, accept the amendment, Councillor Lawrence? No. Huh? No. Um, I shall foreshadow. Um, I might speak on it on the foreshadow rather than now. So I'm just getting a bit, um, we seem to have... You don't need to speak. <laughs> Are you speaking on the motion, Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to the motion actually, yeah. because one of the things that, that I find um, about this motion especially is groups both in and outside of Strathfield. Count, uh, Strathfield residents are very, um, you know, it is a tight-knit community. It doesn't matter where, where you're from. Um, you know, everybody likes to attend each other's celebrations, but in, for us to have to pay and put on um, something for community groups outside of the Strathfield LGA, I don't think is appropriate. I don't think a rate pay should pay for, for that kind of work. Quite important. The motion was actually to call for a report to see if there was any money involved. We don't know how much is involved. We don't know if there's money is going to be involved. So I don't know how you can assume that it's going to cost council any money. Thank you. Um, okay, so in saying that, uh, from what I understand from what um, the count councillor Mike Swan uh, said, he says that it would require council facilitating doing ABC or whatever it was. Well, so even in doing that, and reports still, you know, cost money to prepare. Um, so in, in, in saying that, there is definitely is money involved, and I think the best way is to do it fair across the board. Uh, and fair across the board is there is a lump of money. We can certainly councillors have um, a, can also change the, the the pool of money that's there. They can they can change depending on who applies. Um, and I think there's a lot more movement in that than just singling out different communities. And I don't think that's the right thing. The right attitude. No, no, that would be good. Keep going. <laughs> okay.
Sorry? The, the, independent. Well, you don't have an independent working group. That's the problem. Uh, the, the purpose of this motion, and I'll proceed very cautiously, yes. is I propose that we have council facilitate a cultural holiday, and that's apparently controversial, is that the Homebush Town Centre, this is a well-known issue or, or present, which is that uh, there's a necessity for a public bathroom. I think the issue has always been that there is a lack of land available to support a public bathroom in the Homebush Village. Um, the Department of Education owns a significant amount of land in that area, being the Homebush Primary School. The Department of Transport has a corridor that comes up to the fencing on the Crescent. Um, I thought it would be a worthwhile inquiry that uh, the department, that Stratford Council contact each of the department, the Department of Education, and the Department of Transport, in respect of any um, long-term lease or purchase of that sort of land, uh, sufficient to support a public bathroom. Um, I understand that Crown Lands has put forward a, um, a mechanism by which land transfers <coughs> can occur um, for on an unsolicited basis. Um, that's for private actors. There's also mechanisms for intergovernmental transfers of land and uh, valuations the same by the Value General. Um, this is something worth exploring. I recommend it uh, to move forward, um, noting that some present have angered the United Services Union by privatising the golf course services, <coughs> have angered the Tamil community by refusing the facilitation of a holiday that's significant to them, but many other groups anger the Korean community by saying that they should go apply for a grant if they want some support from Stratford Council. I hope that those that wish to relieve themselves within the Homebush Village precincts might be able to get some support in that <coughs> cold order. Any further debate, councillors? Councillor Hall. Um, I have a problem with the purchase of land. Um, what's the budget? Um, typical labour that just wants to spend, 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 spend. <laughs> 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 My boss would be proud. Um, so, I, I, unless... Who's your boss? What part of your boss? Huh? Who's your boss? <laughs> Go on, tell everyone. Um, so, oh, I have absolutely no problem whatsoever except that this is a um, council meeting. So, <laughs> sure, but you can mention later. I think it is a meeting should be focused on debate, not on the comments. So, <laughs> when you mention labour, it becomes political. Councillor. Because you can call it Councillor Hall. Councillor Hall has the floor. You can call up so Councillor I have Gatler. a problem with the purchase of land. Um, just through the chair, can somebody tell me whether there is a bathroom at Homebush Station? Because uh, because Councillor was talking about there there is a piece of land in the Crescent uh, near um, what's that street? Yeah. No, 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 no. On the other side of the Crescent, you know that um, there's some, a little parcel of land lost. Is it, is it no, on, the other on, the other on the other side. So there is a parcel of land there, <coughs> and I actually, a number of years ago, I actually inquired on whether um, that parcel of land could actually be turned into parking, but unfortunately nothing um, eventuated. But there is a parcel of land there. Now, if, if you're talking about a parcel of land on that side, in the, on the Crescent side, then that's too far away from the, from the well, it's from the shop and it's on the other side. Is there a bathroom toilet at Homebush Station? I'm sorry, I've never heard. I, I can ask that. Yes, there is one there. Upstairs, though. You go to ask the lift and ask the stairs. Well, lucky with a lift. There is one there. There's one in the library and there's one in our new community. Yeah, so that's there. so. I'm look. There's actually three in the new community. In the last. The community. Councillor, new councillors may not know, but in the last council period, um, I was given the wonderful name by the current mayor and another and two current and the current mayor, and another current mayor of the toilet councillor. <laughs> because I try to get toilets in different areas, so I know all about where the. So I didn't know the. I, I, I knew. I, 
We only have one current man. <laughs> <laughs> one more current man. Did I say current man? Well, I did say current man, former current man. Sorry. Well, former, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, so. There is one in the station, there is one in the library. Um, I did suggest signs, but nobody liked that idea. So um, I won't be voting on this because I don't want to spend, I don't think the purchase of land is appropriate. If the transport and the school want to, um, and, and the government want to donate any money or donate the land to build a toilet, then buy all land, but not for council to, to, to spend the money. Uh, the I just had a question for the mayor. Yes, please. Yes. Um, you said that the community room would have public bathrooms, is that correct? And yes. Those would be located in that building and available during ordinary business hours, is that? I believe so, yes. Through the chair? Yeah, yeah, through um, Rawlings, you know. Yes, the, 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 there are there are toilets in the community in the new building. So, so basically... No, no, the... Uh, the new one on the present. The new one on the present. Oh, that one. Um, well, there are toilets. Yes, there are. Well, it isn't open at the moment because uh, yeah. the, yeah. But it no, will be. Open. Yes, it will be open for the public to use the bathroom. Yeah, during the yeah. daytime. you go. You got your machine. Well done. Deliver. Deliver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to draw it on my face and so on. And then we'll, um, we'll come back to it. Yeah. So we are getting uh, a couple of uh, matters we are resolving there with the building. Yeah. And then uh, with those toilets, we'll be able to be uh, both sides of the present. Yes, exactly. There's a ramp on all from building to running through the present. Correct. Yes, I actually took our uh, guests uh, tonight on a tour of that uh, premises. Uh, Robin? Oh, yes, I was wondering, how can you use that? Or that's that's what we're talking about. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Okay. Delivered. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, the motion's been withdrawn. 13.5. Yeah. Sure. And it is cancelled. Okay. 13.6. Um, home with West Shops. Uh, moved by Councilor Mark Warren. Uh, seconded by. Councillor Yes, uh, Councillor, you have the floor. Sure. Um, this revisits the motion that was passed in the March 22 meeting, um, which dealt with the um, exploring or reporting on the possibility of the use of graffiti for paint. I think subsequent to that, um, to come to my attention, that uh, there are funds available to local business owners um, to work with Council to uh, deploy things like uh, graffiti. Point, sorry, graffiti, anti-graffiti uh, paint, as well as um, other anti-graffiti matters. Um, the purpose of the motion is to have a report from Council um, regarding the state of Homish West shops um, and whether that has had any effect um, in reducing uh, the graffiti there, as well as the consultation process uh, that would assist in uh, making clear that those resources are available and therefore um, we may encourage use of those resources uh, by the local shop owners. Any further I do have an amendment um, or an addition actually. Not an amendment actually. Well, it's an amendment addition. I'm just wondering whether you point whether you would add a point to um, that. Uh, <coughs> What I'm trying to put in there is that council also partner with different groups for this issue. Look, council, we do. Um, it's like the 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 uh, council does have. Uh, we have our graffiti removal program, which uh, you probably know is on, uh, along the Rotary. the Rotary Club. Uh, now, unfortunately, the uh, gentleman, as you are aware, who was really active money that um, has passed away in the last four months. And they're selling up again. They're selling up again. Yeah. So um, somebody else will be on it. So we should actually encourage them to uh, apply for a grant through our grant funding program, which is open, uh, currently open, and closes on the 31st of July. Mm -hmm. Which is, I believe, yes. I think that's the right call, yeah. yes. Can we add that as an amendment, please, to the plan? 
I thought Rotary was only on public. It's not on private. I have I have worked with the Rwanda on the cross. I have done that with you. Yes, sir. I mean, it's like different information everywhere. <laughs> People give me the wrong gear. But that's okay. I'm so happy tonight. I'm writing my letter. Everything's good. Wait till you can see it, huh? Do I
Um, and that was as a result of the underlying justifications of the curb cuts disappearing, especially in respect of this precinct within the Strapple Council area. Um, that is because that area was meant to be subject to significant increases in infrastructure. I can recollect that at one point the discussion by New South Wales Government was that a cut and cover plan would have been implemented around uh, the Parramatta Road in this area, uh, which would have provided for pedestrian, easy pedestrian and uh, commuter friendly uh, access to the local shops. Uh, those things haven't eventuated and while we are undertaking the LEP review, um, it's incumbent on Council to prepare a precinct plan for this area in coordination with relevant groups and especially uh, to have some guiding principles um, in the making of that plan. And while we could, uh, we could do uh, this as part of the broader LEP uh, process, uh, in my view, the guiding principles that go behind this type of master planning should be done in an open council meeting, uh, which is why I've set out those proposed principles uh, in this motion and council's officers would then have to report on what would be the significant cost uh, of implementing such a precinct plan uh, and that would be then considered by council. I would say that I understand that undertaking this task will not be something cheap, uh, but compared to the kind of infrastructure uh, and contributions uh, that may be achieved uh, through a range of planning agreements and uh, planning controls in the area, um, it, it, it really does go down to the core business of council. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Thank you, um, I just have a question through the uh, chair to uh, uh, Mrs. Lindbergh. Um, we were discussing about these uh, uh, sort of uh, master plan on Thursday night um, in our LEP workshop. Um, is this an area that, is this one of the areas that we discuss for the future? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is. Yeah. It's an area that we'll need to investigate to identify the number of housing strategy. Mm -hmm. So the, the question is, um, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to figure out um, what you're what you're trying to create, achieve, Council Mayor Swarm, on top of what our council staff are doing as part of uh, what we discussed at the LEP workshop in regards to this master plan. Sure. Can you just assist me with that? Sure. I mean, in some we have a bit of an issue in the sense that um, the draft LEP has already been prepared, and that draft LEP includes indicative planning controls within that precinct area. Uh, council would need to budget for uh, essentially the master planning of this area, which would be quite significant. Um, I read in the Loftus. I just want to. Sorry. Is that correct? My understanding is that um, the currently considered LEP does not uh, does not include that. Can I just get it? There's a couple of questions I had with council before we there, there isn't an LEP that has been included yet. There is an mm -hmm. LEP that was received gateway yes. determination on, and it does not, yes, it does not uh, include the more current precinct as part of it. And, and that's entirely what this seeks to address, which is um, if this precinct is not, does not have a plan that corresponds with. Uh, something like councils put together as a master plan, then one would say that uh, the original per cuts provided the blueprint of what needs to occur there, and that's a public document. Now the implementation update, of course, for council to undertake local traffic planning in that area as part of the implementation, and that would give the basis for which council could then present a new plan for the area. Um, I noticed in the planning proposals that does say that traffic study has been recently completed and then it would be incumbent on council to translate what comes from that traffic study within that precinct zone into a new planning framework for that area as part of the master plan, at least that's my understanding. Do you have any uh, further debate, council? Um, because I know there was a meeting council 
ask me a question that is the process not to make. So I'm just wondering, um, is there part of this motion that was discussed at the um, meeting? Sorry, it's like you're discussing. No, no, I just, oh, we, I did, sorry, you just, uh, when you were outside there, and I did ask uh, Ms. Limburg uh, just about what we talked about on uh, uh, Thursday, that this area wasn't actually included in the uh, gateway um, LEP, or mm -hmm. not LEP. No, first one. So right. yes. um, will it be included in the door, in the door, through the chair? Yes. Will it be included? Because you're talking about stage one. So is this my understanding <coughs> from the workshop the other day is there's still a lot of processes to go through. There's still a lot of quite a number of stages to go through. Um, and so is this area part of that? stages that we still have to go through. Um, because one of the things that I'm concerned about is um, that council prepare a report, should it be that council prepare a report for the, work, for the workshop so that we can workshop it um, so that it can be incorporated? Because it's not going to be a standalone document. No, but there's significant expense involved in undertaking this kind of study. And so how? that would be something that needs to be budgeted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have that in your measure? Yes, in the report. In the recommendation on page number 94. Sorry, so at the end of the, um, so at the, end of the day, is that something that is going to be included in one of the stages? Do we, do we need a separate report or is this part of the whole that you had, that you were grabbing? Uh, there's a significant amount of supporting studies that are yet to be undertaken to inform stage two of the LEP review. So this does not form part of stage one, um, so it would be required to inform stage two. So we can vote for this to go into the stage two process. Should that be? Yes. Yeah. So that would be the amendment. Mm. That is a, uh, the, 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 that should be the, the, the global uh, <coughs> holistic view for the planning uh, of the IHD uh, taken. It could be part of that, which is I understand is you know, in the mind, but not a, uh, so. There should be a holistic approach on the planning for the whole planning thing. One stage has been completed, and, and the other stage to whatever is there, that should be part of that. The only thing that I might say, like obviously I'm supportive of what I've read there, I am like, you know, we obviously want a good planning outcome there uh, in that area, and I understand that's what. Uh, uh, Council of Mass One is trying to achieve to get the best planning outcome. Um, the only thing I might say is that um, when reading that recommendation, we probably just have to uh, add about uh, <coughs> the, the budget implications and then I think something about how it aligns with the, uh, the, the LED process. Holistic approach to the LED process. So they include everything. Okay. Call us together. Mm. Yeah, so if you can add a point uh, nine if it's accepted. Just because normally normally there is a budget reading, there should be a recommendation. No, it should be yeah, a, it should be. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Ah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mr. Mayor, it should be in there, but could I just suggest rather than do it in nine rather just sit before when it's when we're talking about council. Yeah. Number four. No, no, sorry. Yeah. Rather the beginning. Yeah. 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 So where are you? Where are you? Council. At the front. Council report. So literally after the words prepare a report of the budgetary implications. Yes. 
Yeah. There'll be other events put about how it aligns with and the how it aligns with the LEP stage two. Yeah. Um, I think it's generic. But the, the thing is that our LEP will continue on to Gateway, assumedly, right? And then there are. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, but, no, 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 but some like an LEP will proceed, right? Yeah. And then we've got our strategic council review, and then we've got areas which are area studies, right? Effectively, as a council, what we're doing is we're saying we're going to identify and set aside money for the significant reviews and reports that are needed uh, to undertake this specific task. Because it's mm -hmm. not just, just to me, when like we did, we did this report, a fair report on basic communication. Um, if it's worded like that, I think that it'll literally you can get a report that just says it will cost this much. Yeah. Where I think, like the item that you're discussing, we want. No, I think there's been a bit more information about that as well. I, I think there is there are a few things missing at the top, like this. Talking about the report of the budgetary implication, and it's aligned with, with the holistic LEP approach. Yeah, what you want, sorry, where it should go. I don't need an example of holistic, I just need this. Aligned with the, with the, uh, with the uh, LEP approach. Yeah. The LEP approach. Can I prepare a report in relation to, um, which includes the budgetary implications, that's what you want. You don't want to report of the budgetary implications, you want it to include the budgetary implications. Right, well, yeah, we'll put it on point nine and I'll uh, take it. If we go back to point nine, I can. So, I'm the budgetary implications and align with the daily process. That's right. So point one, and alignment with the yeah. alignment with the area yeah, that's it. Are you happy with that council one as well? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, can I just read that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, any further debate councillors? No. Do you need to close Councillor Mansfora? Uh, no. No? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? You never know. One out of five. Okay. Okay. Um, I move that Council alters the order of business in accordance with Clause 8.1. <coughs> yep. And the items listed below be dealt with by exception as they may be adopted and recommended by a single motion. Yes. Uh, not for CS5. Hang on, I'm going to call it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so, what are you? What are you? I'm about to read it. Yep. Sorry, just double the Which one's on the motion? Sorry, just to read it. I'm about to read it. Items by exception. CS1, investment report, page 96. CS, CS2. Oh, there was something on the CS2 that you wanted to speak about. What page is that? You take CS2 off. You're not talking on the CS2. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about it. Let's cancel. 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 let that's the that just that's just the briefing from the workshop, just the copy, page one twenty five. Yep, and then uh, PPC two area park cricket ground range. That's just three. Yeah. So it's just three. <laughs> S1, so anyway, CS3, PPC2. What was the failure again? Which one? PPC. 828. 828, Councillor. What's on your agenda? Fixing that drainage where you put that motion up.
Yeah, resolution. Council, all in favour? Unanimous. Okay. 
CF4, updated in new policy, page 128. So I move up for the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Pentamini, seconded by Councillor Reddy. <coughs> Any debate, Councillor? I think there's a bit of a quality issue with the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Uh, look, I have a few issues with some of the policies. Um, there's a couple of explanations. Um, we have other policies that talk about staff interaction. And for example, we have our media policy, which basically says that the councillors uh, can interact with um, the. Uh, I'm not, I do not remember all the time. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the executive manager. And they only select itself, so where the policy is in there, the communication events, I don't know how to that done. So there's a policy that should be interact with that staff member, but there's other there's policy saying that we can't interact with people. There's a, uh, uh, you know, it, it seems uh, you know, a, bit, uh, a bit of a Yeah, there's a few inconsistencies, and I'm sure it lines up with the, uh, the Office of Local Government sort of. Uh, uh, guidelines. Um, <coughs> you know, for example, 7.1 is another one, which we had access issues with before. Council was entitled to have access to council chambers in their office. Mm. Council was entitled to have during normal business hours for meetings. Um, there's a few little things in there like that. There's, uh, they're talking about there's a uh, schedule of people to talk to, but there was no schedule. Um, the draft social media policy. Um, Basically, you could have someone else operating, you know, for example, a distracted late party page, and, um, and then the council could actually be held accountable when someone else is the administrator. Um, there's quite a few issues in these these policies that I found, and I know we briefly looked at it at the workshop, but once I've gone through them, um, it was you know, quite significant. It doesn't apply to the councillor, um, you know, specific rules about um, you know how councillors. You know, dictating how councillors should uh, run their social media. We have in our media policy, there is a clause which I know that I, I got added in uh, about social media, which basically said, um, you know, don't disparage the council, don't disparage the people involved in the council, the contractors or, or staff. Um, and I think that, to me, that would be the understanding of what you want a social media policy for. Um, the other one was about the draft reduction of waiver of council fees, which I was going to ask just to the chair the uh, CFO, just to get in relation to the practices of allowing uh, people to basically have discretion to waive these fees and whether that was uh, the appropriate practice. practice. If, uh, I Every single day, 
in town centre, in Homebush, um, wherever um, you know I go. And I just think it's you know I don't think we um, that my understanding of the OLG website is that um, it's recommended or suggested for these policies, but we actually don't have to accept these policies just because the OLG is sensitive. So um, I'm actually I won't be supporting these policies tonight. Would you like to put an amendment? I think we should just. Um, I think we should take it to a workshop just when it's been renewed. Well, so we can look at it at a workshop and work through it, and then um, if there are any changes or anything we need to discuss, this will be discussed with the council members. Yeah. Um, so I think this should be workshop. Yeah. I, I know we did like, <coughs> just touch on it. We didn't really. We didn't really go. Into it. So I think we need to really. Uh, yeah, is there any clear policies to keep, like which ones do we need to have? Yeah. Which ones? I think we need to have a policy, but I think the draft policy should be considered in time for a policy. I think a policy that have made policy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> so the draft policy is being referred, I think, referred to a councillor workshop. Can I, can I speak on this? Yes. Referred to a councillor workshop um, for further discussion. I'm wondering whether we should add a bit another point that says um, because a lot of us have um, maybe points that we want to change as blah 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 and I'm wondering whether um, each councillor can maybe should email um, some of the changes, some of the points that they want to see. I think you could come with the points and come with the yeah. yeah, yeah, we can. Yes. Have a, yes. have a discussion. Open discussion. Good idea. Right. Okay. Back to the okay. workshop. So you don't have to Councillor Pennsylvania and Councillor yes. uh, Ready to alter the recommendation to read that the draft policy be referred to a council workshop for further discussion. Four, 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 four policies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put that to you, Councillors. All those in favour? Okay, CS5, Mid Council Committee, moved by Council Blackmore, seconded by Council Ready. So, uh, one, two, and two. Advisory Committee, I had an email that was copied to the Council from Jake and Lee's office and they wanted a representative on that, both that, uh, both those committees, if that was possible, to represent his office on the committee. I think they can, though. Yeah, they can. Yes, but they, yes, but they just wanted to know when the meetings were on. Yeah, I think all of them want to If you've got it too. I think some of them you showed me. No, I think it was said to you and me. I have a proposal so, too. Sorry? Once this is done, I have comments. Once it is? Once this is done, once it comes to. I was just applying to myself. I think Council Pennsylvania. I'm finished. I just want to make sure that they're included on the um, committee and mailing but when the meetings are, that's what we do. Because they do attend the traffic committee as a voting member. Yeah, but they don't get a voting member in the meetings, so they just, they just can attend. Yeah, because they want to attend. Okay, so I think if you put a point six there saying that the, ensure that the uh, federal state, yeah, the yeah. federal member for Stratford, yeah. state member for uh, uh, the state member for Stratford, and the federal member for Reed. Um, are invited to, uh, to participate in um, well, it's, it's that. Well, yeah, the 
Mm. I would love if the members both came to all the committees actually. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a representative from their office to stand council I don't know. I, I'm not going to support number six. Yeah, not going to support number six. You are not going to support number six? No. no. Why is that? Why is that? I think it's fine with that. It's, it's that really good because, because that's where we can support. They're invited. They're invited. Yeah, members are invited. Yeah, as long as it's a member and not not a representative. Yeah, please. What's this? Please. Oh my God. Okay, we put members plus representative. No, we just put member there. Member plus. Okay. Okay, if you're okay with that, just oh, that one to cancel already, because mm. you're the seconder. State yeah. member for Stratford Federal for Re are invited to participate in the all committee. Yes, I think we've we, we had that all committee because we're also um, talking about other committees which they aren't invited or we don't. So, so I think the best well be the multicultural and the economic development of the yeah, one second, Councillor. I just want to make sure we do that. Okay, if you're happy with that, Councillor, ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, any further? Yes. Councillor Dyer, sorry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think you probably saw and you that one of the community members wanted to. Uh, he wrote, she wrote to the. Uh, the new time, but yeah, look, it looks I like his name was uh, lost. So I'm just proposing to consider Basanta uh, Poon and the to part of the, as a non community representative, non voting part of the multicultural uh, and diversity advisory committee. Yeah. Can I just get some around? Because I know um, uh, Mr. Mayor was coming through that she had uh, already applied for the building committee, and I asked. Um, if they can head to, to put her onto that list. Now, I did receive an email in the last day or so um, from the, um, the centre um, saying that she had applied for both and that she wants to be on both. Um, so, if I could just get some advice off them, um, if they can head. Uh, through you, Mr Chair, we were unable to locate any of her emails. Um, we searched significantly on her name, her first and last name and put it across all of council systems and that yielded no results mm. for this particular issue. Yes. Um, the oh, only um, email I received was from Councillor Dada yes. that said I'll, for I'll the wellbeing. Yeah. I'll call you, because I didn't get confused, the email address wasn't actually the, the name. So I'll, uh, if you like, I can, I'll call on that email. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so you're making an amendment to to add? Uh, or to add, uh, Mr. Mayor, Basanta Pugandranathan on, on the as a non-voting community representative for the multicultural and advisory committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you happy with that council already? I'm happy with that. The, you know, the more people involved, the merrier. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, okay, Councillor Chai, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, I also received an email for one of our listings. He's a uh, uh, psychology student. He's going to graduate next year. Psychology, psychology, okay, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he thought he maybe missed it, missed it the chance to be, you know, the well-being committee. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you know uh, maybe can let young people a chance to join in the well-being. You want everyone to get involved in council? Uh, yeah. His uh, name uh, is uh, Nicholas. Do you have the full name? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Nic Nicholas Kisi of Kisich something. I mean. so no. Oh, Nicholas is easy to spell. Yeah. Okay. And the last name is K I C E E C. K I C E E C. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Don't want to be part of bigger things. Well, we. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, K I C E E C. 
thing? Yeah, you can. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not very representative for well-being. Well-being committee. Well-being. Yeah. It's fantastic. We've got so much interest there. Mm. Anything further? Uh, any further, councillor? Just, uh, just reading it. Uh, So there is a. What they're doing is for this time. I am just looking at seven. I guess that somebody is looking for the correct spelling of that. Yeah. There is a hash there mm. at number seven. So mm. I will give you the name later, or I can give you the name. It's normally on the list at the Do you know, um, in respect of where the dash has been left, you can just copy that from the Wellbeing Advisory Committee, I think. Is it? Yeah. It's the same person as the mom. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they are they are changing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I understand uh, <laughs> I did get uh, there was a late uh, we didn't get any application, but there's a late request from the local business owner to be on the local development, economic development committee, um, which I did ask Mr. Aiken Head um, to get the uh, uh, get the, de the details, um, and then we are looking at doing second uh, expression of interest, and then that will yeah, and then that will come back to council. Can't move if you send a letter to all our local businesses as well. Ah, uh, I think that's a terrible idea. That's right. So <laughs> so we have a, we did have one late person for the Any other changes, councillors? I'm happy with both those changes. Uh, Councillor Reddy, you're happy with all the changes. Yes. So, I'll put the recommendation, councillors. All those in favour? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, DEU 1, uh, planning proposal 175, page 175. I'm in. Yes, I'm in. by Councillor Kenneth Am I also near to go to a workshop? <laughs> what do you reckon, Ben? Good. Yeah, there must be an amendment. So, I'm taking it by Council Data. Same amendment as the one before. Yes, sir. The place. That's it. Yeah. Maybe discuss that a council motion should be submitted to a provincial council. Can I add something that's appropriate? Hmm? Can I add something that's appropriate? Yeah, no, sure. I, I personally just think that it would be uh, pleasant to write to the proponent and apologise for the delay in considering the matter. Do you think it's a delay? Well, I think you're. you're <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, if it's appropriate, uh, I think as a regulator, you know, you have the responsibility to handle these things in a proactive manner. And there's probably someone waiting here today hoping they'll get a decision, and instead it's going to be deferred. I'll write on behalf of the deputy. Uh, through uh, myself. Uh, okay. Who myself? Who's on there? 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 Who's on there?
Yeah. If this were delayed, the phase up obviously would uh, have to be yeah. identical to the applicant. Yeah. Correct moment is normally contact the applicant following me. Yes, thank you. I think it's expected to be You are a good job here. How did you clean it? Okay. So any uh, any debate councillors? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? Okay. Page 818, councillors. Homewood West Shopping District. Mm. Yeah. Moved by uh, Councillor Savini, seconded by Councillor Reddy. Debate councillors. I think we all know as the last workshop the treaty is made the approval for the government of the board. Yes. Um, we're going to debate the location. We're going to debate how we? Okay. Okay. We're going to sign on the location. Okay, sign. So <laughs> Did you sign on the location tonight? Yeah. There's four options. Okay. Uh, point of order? Yes. Doesn't number two say that the location will be advised? Oh, two, sorry. Chamber of Commerce. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I think we've decided by page 18, 819. 819. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 819. No, 819. Yeah, sure. 819. Yeah, sure. 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 Yeah, Okay. Anyone would like to make a recommendation? I'll, I'll uh, put on a public record that I think the uh, installation of this XPLU uh, is a waste of uh, council money and is going to attract uh, uh, you know, inappropriate activity in that precinct. And I thank the rest of the future economy. Oh, absolutely. I'm totally with XPLU. <laughs> I have a question. They've been wanting it for the last 10 years. Isn't there a draft? They wanted an ATM for the last 10 years. And, and, and we no couldn't get it because someone... Uh, and no one's taking cash anymore. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't been found a location. That's what I need to do. Yeah, that's not true. Someone's got to be Didn't they want a public hmm? station? Lo so looking for a location. Uh, anyway, can we talk about the motion? Yeah. Is there a recommendation? What are you doing? I'm just saying I'm voting against it. Um, so. I have a question. Yes. Isn't there a toilet at the Homebush at the Station? Station? No. No. No? No. Well then why don't we put it to the to the Really the toilet at the station. That's a different story. That's a people in the shop is making it. Yeah. Look, we have bought the toilet, that's yeah. the issue. The problem is that we own a toilet. <laughs> and we have to put it somewhere. It's not only there are there are application no, uh, there are motions moved in this council that have more than four hundred signatures for this. So what's we'll see, I just find it that so why we'll 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 so many bathrooms. There's not. They actually like there's one that are closed off and they don't maintain it. So they should have responsibility the council to maintain it. So if we put one in for the residents to use, it won't be an issue with the business. I'm well, telling you now. People pull their way as well sometimes. Yeah, you know, we've got a toilet here, well, Mr. Mayor. I mean, they're the ones cooking the food. They should be a look away. Yeah, they might be. The point is that this kind of blue has been installed in various council areas, and they are Easy to operate, they're working very well. Absolutely. And there are pictures that are given the council some time ago. And based on that, this has been purchased. So this is not the first one. Well, the new councillor, the issue is, can I just talk to Yes. The issue is, and the facts are, we have an absolute toilet to install. 
we need to find the appropriate place to install it. Council has given us ideas of where they could put it, and there are four options. Down near the railway station, which don't have any access to sewage, water, or electricity. So, and we don't own the land. We have been doing. Yes, I'm just refreshing everyone's mind. The second one is in the shopping precinct, closest to the shopping where power and however the water is in Henley Road, and the cost to install will be over hundred thousand dollars. The third one is in the car park, close to Henley Road. Water still needs to come from Henley Road. The cost would be 100. The original budget is 140, but with insufficient and a further 100 will be required at a budget review. Mm. And the second one, the fourth one, is up in Henley Reserve, which is about 600 metres away from the original site. Yes. Right. So tonight, <coughs> we need to make a decision. I think it's two and three doesn't matter. I'm very close. Ben says the best place to do a number two is number three. I think there's no option. Go, go for it. We are the council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, my recommendation is three. Option three. Three, Marinello, maybe you can have a tweet. Option three. Option three. In the third location being option three on the attachment. Are we choosing the option, which option do we take, or are we thinking about doing so before we go? No, no, we have to install the toilet. We have to. So what are we going to do with it? Put a fresh water bag. We don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to put no, no, two or three, I have no idea. No, no problem. Sorry. Yes, count that. Doesn't matter. Two and three. It just seems like we're just everything. Yeah. Like yeah. That, that area. That's no different. It's okay. going to be demolished. Sorry. Three, two, one, and there. Two, one, and there. That's right. People can have the chairs in. Councillor. Two. two. Councillor Dasa has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm. <laughs> Look, I, I, a number of people, including the Chamber of Commerce, would appreciate option three. And I also think, because I have moved this motion three times as well, including the signatures and all that. Yes, Captain. And it is option three is the preferred option of the local residents and the Chamber of Commerce. So I will be supporting. Option C, and I would also appreciate that you all could support Option C. People have been waiting this for at least six to seven years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I would support Option C because uh, Councillor Chai is, has been residing there. He's in touch with the more locals, so he's got a better knowledge of local needs. So he, he prefers Option C, and I prefer Option C. No, sir. Yeah, like they have. I talked to Dr. Tang already. You know, he he three is okay. So uh, two is okay for him. Two. Yeah, so two is okay for him. So, mm. so Captain, you second the motion. Two so okay. you're not accepting option three. Yes, I need option two. Two is okay. Two has more room around it, and you get the wheelchair to come up straight. Through the chair to Mrs. Roma. The difference between option two and option three is what? Three <laughs> chairs down about 100 metres. Option three will put the toilet pretty much in the centre of the car park. We park on either side through the centre roadway. Option two will put it up in the shops. The car park on the front side, but the uh, plaza and wall goes out the main street to the long side. So, you don't need privacy, there are more. Yeah, there would be a little bit more privacy in option two. Um, I, believe, I believe there may be a few more complications in option three because of where it actually sits on the corner. I do. I am aware that you know, it's in the previous report, the traffic committee has also looked at the variations for the car park. Yeah. So if we go with option two or three, I'll then work closely with John traffic engineer will make sure it all works until the real actually has to pick up the road to get the water. And they've got to pick up the road anyway. 
Yeah. So, option two or three, the only issue is the water, which has got to come from Henley. Um, so, that's easily resolved to possible water coming away up from the road. So, two would be less expensive. Two, I think, without doing all the investigation, two would probably be less expensive than three. Okay. 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 So, option two, option two for the recommendation. Yeah. No, front two, is it, is it, is it you have today, Councillor Pinsamini and Councillor yeah, yeah. So, yeah. can I just... Yes, Councillor Hall. My So, I have some questions. Um, and now, let me get this right. We are putting an X balloon on, yeah. on the footpath. No. It's, it's not the footpath. It's actually the garden. It's the garden and railway station. No. 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 Option, option two. two. Option one. You need no. to go to huh? go to option two. Two and option two. Mm. Mm. Oh right, right. Sorry, I'm looking at attachment two. Okay, now I've got it. Sorry, I'm looking at attachment two. Right. Yeah, that's in the car park. That's on the corner. So option two is okay. Yeah, that's the page. Page one nine. That's the page. That's, yeah. yeah. It's still behind the shops, right? Yeah, near, near the arcade, yeah. Near the arcade. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So you go for a shopping, <laughs> you, are, you, have, you are in a <laughs> high, you go there. And anyway, Councillor. Question. Yeah, Councillor, I'm waiting for your question. Come on, Councillor. What, um, what's the cost in maintaining it? It's very cheap. Growing all through Mason's garden. 
they oh. slap a river, they slap a river, river all, all the way. So I've got a few things that I'll note down and we'll get there eventually mm. once I go through. So point three, that council update the uh, significant tree register. Mm. Mm. This is the recommendation. No, no. This is an added addition. An added one? Yes. Yeah. That council... Oh. That council allow tree removal within one metre of a dwelling and 0 0.5 metres of a boundary fence. Um, uh, council adjust the dead species list to remove uh, height restriction from the cinema. I don't know if you want to move. Yeah. Cinema. Cinema Camp Laura. <laughs> Camp Laurel. Yeah, Camp Laurel. Uh, filters. Is that app or is that TV? Uh, page. Yeah, still page. 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 Huckleberry. Yeah, huckleberry. Huckleberry. Yeah, huckleberry. Yeah. Huckleberry. Is it Huckleberry? Is that the quote? Huckleberry. Is those four on the uh, on the weekly list? Um, except in the uh, circumstances of a significant tree. Pruning to a percentage of maximum 20% live canopy Yeah, just pruning So this is the, that's another point then, sorry Pruning Percentage of maximum 20% live canopy in the form of canopy thinning to reduce weight in the tree if the tree is overhanging property or for other areas being appropriate which says uh, swimming pool in accordance with AS4373 That uh, that in application form for a dead tree removal, uh, the uh, established or some or created or created. And you've been having that exempt from the BCP, so you're adding to the same. Yeah, so that's the they just put an application form. Mm -hmm. Our staff check it. Uh, but you still, so it's down there, it says best tree management practice. <coughs> that, 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 that remains down the on page 837. <coughs> oh, sorry, yeah. We're nowhere near that. So you. No, that's a different one. Okay. It's still doing. It's still doing. It's still a dead tree, so I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. You're not so replacing that. Yeah, if I put those, just with those, uh, uh, the four species, sorry, just on point five, um, if we just we'll put those ones there, but if we, you, if we can get the correct wording when we come in the minutes, um, so, so seven, that application for a dead tree removal be created and uh, 
the removal can be completed through a minor works permit uh, to council outlining the date of this removal. This is so that if there is a tree, they notify the council of the form, they pay a small fee, um, and then council knows that this tree is being cut in case of any complaints and we can have a look at the tree. Um, then there's Um, in relation to the weed, weed species, um, I just want to, what I want to put in there, um, Peter, is that uh, yes. so this is the moment, sorry. Um, it's basically that these weed species, because um, in the in the recommend in the report it says that they may require uh, structural reports and plumbers and all this sort of stuff like that. What we're saying with these weed species that we yeah. yeah. So mm. yeah. So in relation to the weed species, that uh, removal uh, be permitted. Would that be okay? Something along those lines. Sure. Um, we just have to check on what we have. Yeah, no, that's not on that. Uh, yeah. That's not on that. So it's the weed. So, so the plan was when we. The four weed species. When we review the disease part though, yeah. we will, there's also a couple of trees that go to the home as well that should be added to the weed species. Okay. So, so we're, we're, these trees so come from one, for example. So we better add the nine. So in relation to weed species. You need to re look at them. To any weed species that removal will be permitted. Yeah. Without. Uh, 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 no, without, no, 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 they need to, they need to talk to the council, they need to, the issue, the issue is with the DA, people are illegally cutting our trees down mm. because they don't want to pay for the DA or they don't want to notify council in case they get rejected. Mm. So we're just trying to make it easy that people actually come and talk to us and say, hey, this, this tree's causing a problem for, for my, my property. And obviously the recommendation says about the replacement um, of the, the tree on a two to one basis as well. Do we need to read? Do we need to put in the one that we read with the weed species list? I think Peter's no, we'll going to vote it. Anyway, the okay. Yeah. In relation to any weed species, that removal will be permitted exactly. without the need for a. Um, Good job, we're not going to have to. We're 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 going to have Need for uh, any further reports. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, When you're finished, I do have a question. Um, I, I, I just want to ask a question before I make another amendment possibly, um, that uh, <coughs> what we talk about is that there's a two to one basis for tree removal. So you might have a tree that, you know, say, you know, 2,000 litres. So what are the rules around strengthening, strengthening that to make sure that you know, you know, there may be a tree causing damage or whatever, it, whatever it's doing. Um, how do we make it stricter to make sure that they're possibly replacing with the same capacity? Maybe uh, many smaller trees, but the big issue we found with a lot of trees is some trees come down on site and they're naturally too big for the property anyway. So the reason for the two to one is they can't bring a smaller growing species and put two in instead of one big one. The plan is so uh, when this process goes through, the whole objective of this was to, <coughs> to reduce the number of DAs which people might encompass them. So by going to a permit system, um, when I talked to Trout last week about this, we believe the best option will be that a condition of removal to the permit system is that they put new trees in first. Mm -hmm. So when we go out to the inspection, we're doing one time inspection, the new trees will go in and they'll be able to take them. Um, tree out of it. That way, because at the moment the current rules on the DA say you win six months, mm -hmm. we don't get time to go back around and check within six months. So we like doing it up front, unless they're putting it back in the exact same spot, it won't be extensive with it. The, tree, the new trees will go in and then we'll later remove the existing trees. Yeah. And with, with that as well, Mr. Don't read procedural time. Yeah. And you're implementing a follow up, uh, follow -up. process to check on those uh, the trees? 
Well, we are doing harder and we'll include the new tree have to be maintained until they get to that height when they're protected under the decent tree cover. Yeah, um, and then uh, the following, the, the pruning, sorry, the other one, last point. Um, so you've got the best three minutes of practice, and uh, there's a little difference in depth and decency. Three metre clearance above the roof or property um, structures. Sorry, this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the structure. Well, that means anything. Outside of the property. Mm -hmm. so. okay. And with the, with the other one, uh, sorry, Mr. Boma, um, just with the property size, so this is obviously less than 300, more than 300. Less than 300 is only one tree, less, exceeding 300 is about two trees. Right. Um, can we adjust that to, um, to increase, increase that? Uh, yeah, we, we, could, we could easily increase that. The only reason we come up with that, that is why I the property of less than 300 metres. It would be very rare to be able to accommodate two trees and five trees. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people were getting upset with. We did prove it to the AFA that had the two trees in, and then when we did the follow up, we found that they didn't have the roof of the two trees in. We've got to be assessed on, a, on, on yeah. every basis. We've got to be assessed on every basis. Yeah. We've got to be assessed on every basis. We've got to be assessed on every so if there's room for three, you would suggest them put in the three. Yeah. Yeah. It's said minimum, so I'm assuming. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want to change it to? No, I just thought it would just increase it to what, uh, just to two or three. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. If we're and, and if, and if, space allowed. And if we get that, they can do the contribution. Yeah, if we get that, look at the car. Get two trees on three and a square metre block down, we can we have to come to another arrangement. Is there a policy also between Mr. Boehmer in regard to getting native permission for pruning? Uh, yes, there is. Common law covers that. Right. Um, should, that very, be, should that be in our tree policy? Well, currently, pruning is permitted with a permit. We don't accept the permit to trim a tree unless the owner of the tree is given consent. Mm. Right. To the from the From the, from the, from the neighbor. Right. It is a very difficult one. Mm. We get quite a few where the owners of trees don't have anything to do with the tree, yeah. and the neighbour is getting the tree. Yeah. Um, and we they're the problem. They're the, they're the request we yeah, get. And we can force them with it down here in the tire. So we can't, a neighbour that's getting all the overhanging can't get a, no. the yeah. owner of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter that we're doing together with the environment. Right. But they can. They can prune their side. They can prune their side, provided they get a permit to prune and to be part of their DCP. However, um, you've got to get approval of the owner to do the treatment. And if the owner is not there, doesn't need to. It's like uh, just, uh, you know, I had a, a matter today on the of the wind and the rain uh, where several branches from a, a neighbouring tree fell into a property. Um, you know, this, this gentleman doesn't allow his children to play in his backyard yeah. because there's significant, like, the tree's healthy, but there's significant size branches falling down. Um, and, I, and I don't think it's good practice that uh, you know, people should be, in, you know, in, in, you know, like, well, obviously we don't want to destroy our canopy, but uh, you know, people should feel safe in their homes. In the time I've been here, there's been, I've had to deal with quite, quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very hard one to work out because the tree belongs to one property and it's usually the name that doesn't want it, or you'll get a candidate property where the, the owner of the property doesn't care and just uh, discarded it. We had, we had one recently where a tree was severely damaged by a neighbour to the point where we had an issue of emergency orders to remove the tree and then um, because we issued the emergency orders on the tree owner, he copped the cost 
from the damage on the other owner, which is, I thought was pretty unfair, but you know, join the two names and sort out the cost. What if it's a weed? Sorry? What if it's a weed? Sorry? What if it's a weed? Well, if it's a weed, that's different. You still got the same issue of who's responsible for the cost of the tree, and who's responsible for the cost of insurance when the tree fails. If it's a if a, so if it's a weed, it can can the um, neighbour still prove his side if it's a weed? I think generally I, I don't know if this is just you know people that I know or whatever. Most people think that you can prove your side, your, you know anything in your fence line. In your fence line. But obviously it's not it's not no, the case. I mean, that's, not, that's not the case. Yeah, it's not the case. We've got a policy in place that you need a permit to prune trees to maintain the county. But we just changed the wind in it. We just changed the species. Neighbouring. Still got to do it with neighbouring. Still got to get neighbours to get neighbours through. Yeah, 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 neighbours through. Y
to the male sperm. Oh. Or the protein is the moving uh,
What's your thoughts on one metre to two metres? Several councils did implement one metre and two metres from the building. They then revoked it because they found that they were losing significant amount of sure. yeah. Because the people went berserk. I think one metre. Yep, two metres. I think the inner way metre is one metre. Okay, they do metres is too much. Yeah, they, they revoked it because they were losing too much county. Two metres is too much. You have to read the most stick to one metre and see how it works. Okay. Hard to go. Yeah, and that one, I think it was one of the councils for three metres. Yeah. Most building blocks are on a 15 metre drive. Yeah. So you can 15 metres from off block, three metre driveway, you know. 10 or 12 metres of house, mm. doesn't believe much room for trees, so they found that a lot of trees disappeared real quickly. Mm. So let's uh, yeah. untip it and then I'll go to Yeah, I think it's Does anyone have any other uh, comments on that? Yeah, I'll just add one more thing. I think it's a good idea to have a look at the I had a suggestion, I don't know what the mood of the room is though, but um, in respect of the boundary fence, I mean, are we principally concerned with the side boundary as between neighbours and should we really be including someone's front boundary fence in that? I'll say, or even it's just fence, it doesn't say whether it's the front boundary. Well, it's actually your boundary with the street where I don't yeah. think one should be exempt from uh, normal rules, personally. As I said, it's in the front boundary. Uh, yeah. well, if it's a metre from the fence, the front fence, yeah. Half a metre from the front fence. Yeah, then it, there's a lot of damaged fences. And yeah. Oh, that, that's just my view, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for reading it, I think. Half a metre from the fence. Yeah, good. From the bad side. From the front boundary fence. From the bad side. 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 Like it does. Right. I don't need a dwelling. But, um, okay. Okay. Any further discussion, councillors? Debate. Okay, I'll put the recommendation as written on the uh, on there. Yes. Yep. All in favour? Yep. Uh, councillor Dato, councillor hand up please. Okay. Councillor Dato, councillor Reggie, okay. councillor Paul, councillor Pentadini, councillor Blackmore. Councillor Chai, against. Councillor Swan, I declare it carried. Thank you, Councillor. Matters of urgency, nil. Uh, closed session, nil. I declare uh, meeting closed at 9 11 pm. Uh, thank you, Councillor.